This Leviathan box has been on my shelf since its release date, but today I want to try something a little different. I want to see if I can take these standard space marines and find a quick and easy way to make them into battle damage space marines. The way I'm going to do the marine side of the box is, I've split them into two teams. Team 1 is the Inferno Squad, the Veterans and the Librarian. These guys are stranded on a desert like planet and are trying to survive constant Tyranid attacks. Team 2 is going to be the rescue team that arrives as support and to get them out of there. I'm going to start with just the Inferno Squad and the Battle Damage and this is going to be the template for how I'm going to do the Veterans and the Librarian in the next videos. But where do I start with this? I could try just painting the damage on but with 16 models overall to do this on it would take me way too long and I'd easily get burnt out. So I thought let's just add some battle damage before I start painting. It's a bit risky but it could work. My knowledge of the Tyranids is next to nothing. They're dangerous aliens that work as a hive mind. But I do know that they have razor sharp claws and that this is going to be the focal point of the battle damage. I start by making claw marks with my hobby knife and the knife doesn't have to be a new sharp blade because with enough pressure it cuts through the plastic easily enough. I add marks on the parts I think that would take the most damage like the legs, their backpacks, the helmet, the shoulder pads and on some of the marines I add claw marks across their flamer weapons. One of the cooler ideas I had was to add a claw mark across the marine's eye because the scar on Sub-Zero in Mortal Kombat looks total badass. After the claw marks I switch to my clippers and I start taking away bigger pieces of the armour. I want these guys to look like they've really been in the thick of it for a while and that the armour has taken a lot of damage. The final damage I add is some piercing damage from the claws so I started drilling holes across various parts and of course I had to put one straight through a marine's eye. I'm not sure what size drill bit I used but it was a pretty small one. I got a tub full of small drill bits and I went through just to see what fits best. Then I rough up the edges of the holes with a hobby blade and then add some claw marks coming out of them. I did this to the whole 10 man unit and I was really afraid of messing this up and making a mess of the whole unit but I think that it turned out really good so far. I decided to paint the marines as ultramarines but only did the base colours, the shades and a light dry brush of Calgar blue on the armour and if you want to know how to paint ultramarines you can check out the video on the card above. To start the painting I used a sponge piece to add Rhinox high to the damaged parts. I had this sponge stick from Green Stuff World and I wasn't sure if it's intended to be used as it is but I cut off a piece and used it with the tweezers instead. It made it much easier to control. You almost want to use it like you would for dry brushing. Get some Rhinox hide on the sponge, dab most of it off on the palette and start dabbing it on. You want a scattered look and you can get that look from dabbing it on lightly with the sponging technique. Next was to add some silver onto the damage and I went with lead belcher because it's a darker silver colour. Use the same technique as before but this time focus more on the edges because you don't want to completely cover the Rhinox hide base colour. Since this unit is all flamers it made sense to add some weathering to them so I wanted to add muzzle burn on the front of the weapons. I started with dracking off nightshade on the edge and you want to glaze it on so I added a little lamb and medium to the mix. With it still wet, I added Caraburg Crimson next to it and blended it into the Drakenhof Nightshade. Then I finally did the same with the Seraphim Sepia to finish it off. This was the point where I was going to add some shades in to try and finish it off but when I was looking around I completely forgot I had a bottle of Dirty Down Rust. This is going to be the thing that will take the battle damage to the next level. It's really going to show that these marines have been stranded here for a long time fighting it out. Now using Dirty Down Rust can be a little tricky. The surface you're using it on has to be warm to the touch but these models were at room temperature and they were okay. And you really have to shake the shit out of this bottle until you hear the ball knocking around inside and then give it another good I applied it onto the damaged parts letting it pool in the recesses and pulling it out over the edges like it's spreading. I can't use it like a shade or a contrast because I'm using it on small specific parts but it can be used like that on bigger parts like scenery pieces to give it that great looking rust effect. The final thing was to paint the base and I wanted a desert wasteland look to it so I added sterling mud onto about a quarter of the base and then I spread on a good bit of the crackling paint and ghrelin art onto the rest. The more you add of this stuff the bigger the cracks will be so it doesn't have to be a thin layer just scoop it up and start spreading it around. Once dry I basted with XV88 shaded it with Seraphim Cephia, a dry brush of XV88 and a final dry brush of Ushapti Bone to finish it off. 
I had some tear in the skulls from the skulls kit, so I stuck one on and painted it with a shafty bone, served from sepia shade and a padded witch flesh dry brush. I was taking the chance by taking a blade and clippers to these guys to damage them up and I'm glad I did because I'm really happy how it turned out. There are great tutorials on YouTube about painting battle damage in great details, but without physically adding the damage in, I will still be painting this unit at Christmas time doing it that way. There are a few more steps you could add in for greater details, but I set out to find a way to do it in a quick and easy way and I think I did just that. But in the next video I'm going to be switching to the veterans and I'm going to be adding greater details onto them guys. But if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and once again, thanks for watching.